Paul Mozina. David's on deck. Well, I, I hope I uh, don't strike out. I'm at the plate now, <laughs> and um, hope, hope you hit a, hope you hit it out of the park. Uh, thank you very much for your, your time and attention. I really appreciate this opportunity to speak to you all tonight, and I'm going to be referring to my written comments just to make sure I get it straight. And, and there's a copy of my comments on the table out uh, uh, in the front, man by Chris Lee, who is keeping an eye on me. So without any further delay, here's, here, this is the message I would like to uh, give to you all. Uh, <clears throat> what is the purpose of government? Oops, excuse me. What is the purpose of government? We, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Contrary to the Republican principles America was founded on, we find ourselves in a state of war between the government and the people. It's not talked about much. It's not mentioned in the Office of Violence Prevention's Blueprint for Peace, nor is it being addressed by the Milwaukee City County Heroin, Opioid, Cocaine Task Force. It's the war on drugs, AKA the drug war. This is a war, this is a war between the government, which is claiming rights the people have not delegated to it, and the people themselves, who are incapable of delegating any rights to the government that they do not individually possess. The drug war is hopeless because it endeavors to stop consensual behavior, which our Republican form of government purports to guarantee the freedom to engage in. The war on drugs is worse than a failure in that in addition to not accomplishing its goals, it has made the problems and challenges of a world filled with dangerous substances even worse. Rather, rather than taking, my, sounds like my mic is cutting out. I don't, back up? Yeah, Thanks, back. Russ. Rather than, rather than taking a mature approach to the realities of dangerous substances and educating people about them, while at the same time supporting a regulated market with known dosages and purity, we have a fear and propaganda driven approach that begins with our youngest people by teaching them that they are not the masters of their own bodies and that they will be treated like children for the rest of their lives with the government controlling what they can inoffensively possess and consume. There were 13 drug related homicides in 2014, 25 in 2015, 15 in 2016. There were 60 drug related shootings in 2014. 68 in 2015, and 36 in 2016. The data for 2017 has not been published yet. We can only guess how many argument-driven, gang-related, retaliation, or unknown cause homicides and non-fatal shootings were really drug war-related. This, this is just some of the collateral damage caused by the government's illegitimate war on drugs, which is really a war on people. We, the people, have never been asked if we want to give the government the right to control what property adults can inoffensively possess or consume. Yet this fundamental usurpation of our unalienable rights is the foundation of the drug war. The arbitrary criminalization and control of certain substances that consenting adults choose to possess, to sell, possess, and consume is causing harm in a myriad of ways. Attempts to control the supply of natural opioids has led directly to the pro proliferation of synthetic opioids. Synthetic opioids like fentanyl can be produced anywhere and shipped anywhere, and there is no way this can be stopped. Consumers and suppliers must do their business outside the watchful eyes of law enforcement. This is an extremely dangerous proposition given the money and property involved, and there is no third party available to arbitrate disagreements. In most cases, the purity of the substance is unknown, and, it, and as is the case with substances adulterated with fentanyl, the consequences can be fatal. The risks involved raise the price of the controlled substance, which results in consumers attempting to optimize their consumption via injection, which leads to HIV and hepatitis C. The high prices drive desperate people to lives of crime to support their habits. The consensual nature of the transactions forces the government to violate civil liberties with wiretaps and legal stops, frisks, and searches. 
Participants in the controlled substances market caught in law enforcement's web are under enormous pressure and often consent to serve as informants making controlled buys ostensibly to help catch the big fish, or they cop a plea out of fear, even if they are innocent, to reduce the charges or avoid a felony conviction. It's all about catching the big fish with the dream of, with the dream of getting drugs off the street. This is a fantasy which is manifestly evident by the failure over the last 50 years to get drugs off the street and the ocean of readily available drugs. The worst part about it is that the drug war spear is pointed predominantly at people of color. Black and brown people have been targeted for generations, leading to mass incarceration, cycles of broken homes, and struggling ex-felons. The mayor and common council are the point of the drug war spear. And the police force you hire with the money you tax from us is the tip of the spear. The Milwaukee Police Department has a futile and hopeless task of enforcing the drug laws. They do as they are told and will not hesitate to kill a person who defends their unalienable right to inoffensively possess and consume a controlled substance. Yes, the government would rather see you dead than allow you to possess a forbidden substance. I want you all to consider the consequences and the costs seen and unseen, direct and indirect, that result from your participation in the war on drugs. I want the inter Intergovernmental Red Relations Division... 30 seconds. I want the Intergovernmental Relations Division to lobby the state and federal, federal governments to stop the drug war. I want to see our scarce resources at the federal, state, and city levels devoted to harm reduction. I want the city of Milwaukee to stop supporting the war on drugs and to deal with the realities of dangerous substances through education, regulation, and treatment when necessary. According to Benjamin Franklin, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Next we have David Bustamove.